Hi everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. Yeah, I just had the uh, the chance to to ask this question because uh, um, I am personally a huge believer in transparency. Uh, that's kind of like why we are we are here at the first place. We're uh, we're a DeFi services uh, company. We're on the market for like three years and a half now. Uh, launched in the summer 2020, um, and we are specialized in the DeFi space and around the. Uh, uh, trustless services. So when I mean trustless services, uh, our tech allows you to create tokens, uh, to vest tokens, to fundraise using the chain capabilities as well. Uh, and you can also, and that's the first product we ever brought to the market, uh, lock your liquidity, right? So uh, today we're going to mainly focus on token vesting uh, because token vesting is uh, probably one of the most used of our services especially since uh, the bear market. So I'm precisely referring to, uh, to the fall of FTX, right? Uh, because after the fall of FTX and others such as Celsius, uh, people started to uh, pay more attention to what's actually happening on the chain rather than trusting third parties. Uh, this is what we offer because everything is based uh, on the chain. Uh, and so for us, it has been more of a bull market in terms of adoption rather than the bear market instead of, of course, pricing action. And, uh, and we saw... Um, Basically, our customers, sorry, and users of the blockchains, EVM compatibles, because we're mainly on EVM chains. Uh, so a lot of values uh, using these type of services. So uh, this is kind of like why we're uh, uh, here today to, to talk about it, to, uh, let's say, pursue the effort uh, of adoption of such services. So what is token vesting? Um, let's say in a few words, token vesting is the process of having digital assets uh, gradually distributed over a specific period of time. Um, so this is something that is commonly used for investors, for advisors, for marketing allocations, you name it. Uh, but I'm just going to use this example, ApeCoin. Uh, so this is, uh, the information comes from Misari, which is a data analytics provider. Um, at launch, roughly 26% uh, of the total so token supply was unlocked. The remainder of the tokens is unlocked over 48 months. Da -da -da -da. So this is a vesting schedule. And the source is Messari.io, but if you ever happen to try to check this data on chain, for example, you're never going to find it on the blockchain, on the Etherscan explorers, and the like. Basically, you rely on trusting what's called the white paper, technical white paper, um, and this is kind of the starting point of um, the different approaches that you may take when you want to vest tokens for um, for your uh, favorite or just your projects that you launch. I believe there are a lot of founders in this room, um, so this is kind of like probably Intel for you as well. So how, um, why would you use token vesting at the first place if you're a founder or if you're a, an investor as well? Uh, this is for team tokens, founders tokens, uh, also of course investors, advisors, marketing uh, allocations, token reserves, ecosystem reserves, staking rewards, you name it. Uh, liquidity, of course, you know, if you plan to ever list on decentralized exchanges or centralized exchanges uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so this is more to like an introduction to give you the landscape of why you may need token vesting for which kind of use cases. And then you have different methodologies. Uh, how can you vest digital assets? You have, first of all, what we call the custodial vesting. So you're going to rely on a third party. In this case, I use Coinbase Custody. It's just an example. Of course, you have different, uh, uh, different types of providers, different types of services that are offered. But you basically rely on, in this case, Coinbase to vest your assets, and then funders, investors, and different allocations are withdrawn or claimed or even distributed by the custodial themselves. So this is the first way of doing it, which is kind of like the most used by, if you take by, um, by market capitalization, uh, the biggest projects in terms of cap, they're usually going to go for these, uh, these options, as well as the investors. So the biggest investors, you take like a, uh, the biggest venture capitalists, for example, they usually tend to like this kind of approach, uh, historically speaking, over, the, over the, the two last cycles, actually, not just this one. Then you have another method that is called the self-custody, uh, also known as uh, dude, trust me. So this is, of course, something that is uh, very different because you, this time, may rely on the team themselves and you basically trust them that they're going to distribute the tokens or not just simply distribute the tokens, but rather execute the plan as presented at the first place in their white paper, for example. So if someone tells you, hey, this is 100% of my supply, 20% is for the team, but I'm not going to touch it for the next two years, you have to trust this person or this team, or sometimes 
it's even it goes deeper than that because you may see that people are using Genosis safes. So Genosis safes are multi-signature wallets for those that are not aware. Uh, so you may believe that this is actually something that is uh, controlled by more than one individual, but you know who knows, right? This is again, dude, trust me, uh, which is very used by um, low capitalization. Um, it tends to change, right? Because these low capitalization now use services like what we're going to talk about just next in the next slide, um, but something to keep in mind. And then you have a third method of doing it, which is called non-custodial vesting. So instead of trusting Coinbase custody, instead of trusting yourself or your favorite developer that you met on Telegram, for example, you're going to trust the chain. And this is what we believe in. I would rather believe the chain than any one of us, myself included. Right? That's our take as a company and as a decentralized services provider. We believe in the chain. Uh, because this is data that cannot be changed. This is data that, is, uh, that can be uh, also uh, challenged, that can be analyzed, that can be also used by third parties, say uh, your favorite data analytics provider. We discussed about Messari. You can also think about Nansen. You can think about tokenterminal.com. You can also think about DeFi Llama. Anyone that knows a bit about DeFi and that put a hand into it knows these platforms that, are, that I am talking about here. Um, so basically, the idea here, if we were to summarize, is that trustless vesting provides you with transparency, security, and precision for token schedules. Because if people are allowed to claim tokens by, let's say, January 20th at 5 PM, that's one thing. But if they're allowed to claim the tokens at block number 1290071, this is what we call precision. There is no such thing as, oh, we unlock these tokens first because, you know, VC tier 1, right? The chain is here the neutral third party that we need for this kind of uh, use cases, in our humble opinion, obviously. Uh, we, have a, we have a bias because we love the blockchain. Then you can also apply this to liquidity. Uh, just as a show of hands, who knows what a rug pull is? Right? Whoever got rug pull? Sorry. <laughs> so maybe you heard the term liquidity lock, right? Uh, so liquidity lockers is basically the same as vesting for tokens, but this time you lock and you vest a liquidity provider position. So imagine you list EBC, right? The token of today, we launch a token together. Da, 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 da. This is like a utility token for uh, governance of the EBC next, uh, next, um, next year, right? Uh, so we pull it into Uniswap, and then we say, OK, people see interest. They're going to buy the asset uh, because you know, it has its utility and so on and so forth. After some time, you can just remove the liquidity. And if people have invested there, they might be left with a worthless asset. So committing your liquidity position in a, smartless, uh, sorry, in a trustless smart contract is also something that is good for trust, security, and by some extension, because of all the uh, API integrations that you may have uh, coming with that type of services, exposure. right? And investors are looking for it. This is just a chart of the, um, of the, uh, of the usage that comes from the blockchain. Uh, once again, all the statistics that you will see today are available on the chain. Um, and people are looking for this type of services. So this is the rate of adoption of our main used uh, service, which is uh, liquidity lockers. And as you can see, after FTX, or even slightly before from October 2022, we have seen a tremendous adoption of the service because people see value in security and in additional commitment. It's not just, hey, dudes, uh, let's trust the white paper. No, let's commit on the chain, right? Uh, and of course, you have all these integrations. So maybe some platforms, some, no, uh, some names sorry, that you may have heard of. Uh, Dex tools get a terminal, debank zero, and the graph. And I'm just gonna finish on that. I think I have yeah one minute left. Uh, the graph is uh, is very interesting because at first we were basically providing APIs ourselves as a company for third-party platforms. For example, CoinGecko, right? Hey, CoinGecko, pull the data from our API so you may reflect circulating supplies and vesting schedules on your platform. And one person in the conference told me once, like, hey, why would I trust your API? You're a company. You're centralized. So that's why we shifted from uh, our um, self-made APIs to use the graph. For those who know the graph, it's a decentralized network of APIs. So now we rely on the chain itself and on the decentralized network of the graph to stream this data to you know, platforms that may be interested to, uh, to, uh, to display it. And then, yeah, just a few metrics. We have uh, had over 100k customers served since 2020. Um, this is coming from Dune Analytics. Uh, for, those who, for those who know TVL total value lock, that is actually liquid. Uh, not inflated like uh, you know you may have heard of uh, of a balance sheet uh, of an American exchange uh, that was not exactly TVL right 
so we have uh, top 40 liquid TVL on DeFi Llama and the subgraphs that I just mentioned that power our decentralized APIs. And I think that's it. Thank you very much. That was fast. That was a lot of information. We're available. Uh, we have a team of few people here. So please feel free to uh, check us out, discuss. And yeah, invest your tokens. Thank you.